Hello there Aries, welcome to your February 2017 tarot reading. So once again, I am using the same spread that I did last month. It's the astrological 12th house uh, natal spread. And we're going to look at each sector of your life and see, you know, some of the things that are coming through and how we can mitigate some of the challenges, okay? So let's start with the first house. This is pretty much the face that you uh, show to the world and the energy that you are bringing with you into the month of February 2017. The Three of Cups is generally a very, very positive energy where someone is, um, you know, behaving in a way that is very cooperative, that is very genial, that's very amicable, and you're easy to be around other people. This is also indicative of social gatherings, social functions, social interactions uh, coming through in a very harmonious manner. I feel that this is the month in which there will be, you know, many social visits, social calls, enter, uh, entertaining guests at home, as well as inviting people into your space, into your home environment, and making you feel quite good to reconnect with people on an emotional level. So I do see this is a very, very jovial, um, you know, month with a lot of uh, social outings and social opportunities and social engagements overall. Uh, the Three of Cups very oftentimes is a situation where we can sit down and have uh, many, you know, heart-to-heart -heart conversations with another person. Usually siblings play uh, out pretty strongly here in this spread. Family as well as, um, you know, close-knit friends. So I feel like this is the month in which you are drawing back your energy. And you're also trying to decide as well, you know, the people that are... Um, spending more time with the people that are in alignment with you or the people that you have very strong emotional connections with. So you're not scattering your energy. So I feel like you, you're pulling things back in and it's actually a very harmonious, good energy to have. In terms of your financial sector, we have here the second house, which is the four of swords in the reverse position. Um, if there has been a little bit of a slowdown in January, um, I do feel that financially things are going to be looking up for you this month. There are a lot of phone calls that I'm sensing some of you need to uh, return. So if you're working in a capacity where you are um, dealing with clients or dealing with like callbacks, dealing with uh, commission basis especially, I feel like this is a pretty busy month hitting the ground running. A lot of social functions, social engagement, but also even, um, you know, taking clients out, meeting a lot of clients, uh, expanding the network where you are able to finalize contracts, where you're able to land something, okay? So there's a very busy energy. So if there has been a lull in the past three months, I feel like things are really, really picking up for you in, a, uh, in your work environment and as well as, you know, in your financial sector. Um, what I'm also sensing is um, I feel like some of you might be awaiting some type of a settlement and I do see workers compensation for some of you. If you've been waiting on some type of a settlement, I do feel that there's going to be, um, they're saying something is being pushed along. So it could be, you know, if, if there has been a standstill and you have no idea what's happening with your case, you have no idea what's going to happen in terms of compensation, in terms of court um, decisions. I feel like something is coming through for this month. Legal issues are being uh, cleared up as well as, you know, just having a, a sense of direction as to where your case is headed, who's handling it, how they're able to resolve it, what information they need from you. So at least some clarity coming in regarding time frame for some type of um, medical compensation or even, you know, financial compensation through some type of a work situation. I feel like that's going to be made available for some of you, okay? And it's going to appease your worries and your anxieties. In terms of your communication, um, what I'm sensing is I feel like this is a small minority of you. If you have siblings, they might be going through some um, unfairness in their own life, okay, with the justice card in the reverse position. So a sibling might be going through some type of separation in their home environment. So if they're married, they might be uh, having some legal disputes. If they are a little bit younger, I feel like there might be some issues when it comes to like authority figure people in a school setting, like um, even management, you know, upper management or even people in a school setting. So you have, if you have siblings, there's, they're going to be coming to you about some type of uh, decisions that they're trying to make regarding, you know, legal issues, regarding some um, things in their environment that they felt they have been treated unfairly. Um, 
And this is specifically for those of you who have like, um, you know, step siblings. I feel like if your, your step siblings might be specifically dealing with some type of uh, family dynamics that's breaking down in their own lives and they're coming to you for advice or they're coming or you're hearing about this and you're going to be the one that wants to, you know, help out, that wants to offer your expertise or that wants to, you know, like fix this situation. But they're telling you this is something that is kind of like outside of your control. So try to pull back your energy once again. Um, meet them halfway. So if, you know, they're coming to you, I, I feel like it's it's not that they, they want anything from you or expect anything from you, but they might need that sh uh, emotional support from you. So if they need to vent, just let them vent and, you know, try not to offer anything unsolicited in this environment, okay? Because what they're dealing with, it shows up here as a major arcana card, which basically means it is something bigger than ourselves. So I do feel that this is one of those karmic things that they have to experience and, and, and muddle through on their own so that they can gain their own insights and wisdom and clarity. You're going to want to step in and make the situation better, but I feel in this situation, it's kind of like outside of your control, so don't uh, get entangled in this, okay? In terms of your communication with the Justice card in the reverse position, uh, this is a, a card about, you know, like what, when it comes up in the upright position, it basically means seeing both sides of the story, um, being, you know, impartial, being unbiased. With the Justice card in the reverse, they're basically telling you as well, first of all, know both sides of the stories, know the in and outs, don't jump to conclusions, and especially don't... Um, I, I'm feeling very strongly like don't offer input unless the other person is asking for it because I feel like there's something here where somebody is a little bit irritable or agitated and they might just be itching for a fight. On the other hand, I feel some of you, there will be discussions about either um, dividing assets between people. Um, a lot of like legal jargon that's being thrown around is what I'm hearing in your environment. So it could be related physically to, you know, your, uh, your home environment where you might be going through legal issues and you might be trying to liquidate assets and then divide assets between people. Um, there might as well also be a situation where you're called upon to represent somebody. If you're I even in this type of environment, like a law environment, I feel things coming in very strongly where they're telling you know both sides of the story, know the ins and outs, and especially know the details before you um, jump the gun, before you can jump to conclusion is what I'm feeling. So there's a little bit of digging that needs to happen, and there's a little bit of like looking at a situation very, very objectively so that you can understand that it's not really about, you know, um, it's not really about like right and wrong. It's more about like what's the easiest thing to do in this situation to appease both sides, both parties, okay? So it's a little bit of a tricky energy. It's kind of like airing uh, on the middle ground. And I feel like with your energy as being, you know, the, the first sign of the zodiac and also like the, the most, um, I want to say like the most directed energy as well, I feel that it's going to be hard for you to straddle this middle ground. And, you know, also the, the Libra um, side, that's your opposition. And Libras tend to err on the side of, you know, they, they understand both sides of the coin. They try to be fair. They try to be very, very impartial and unbiased. And I feel like that energy is going to be required of you. You need to cultivate this so that you don't um, rush into situations or say things that are either riling people up or that are not founded or based on, you know, a, a, an, an innate understanding of a situation. In terms of your family life, we have here the Wheel of Fortune. And the Wheel of Fortune is basically a lot of luck, a lot of uh, abundance being made available in your home life, okay? So the family that you're growing up in or the family that you're hoping to create for yourself or the, the living situation that you are currently dealing with, there is some type of a turnaround. So there might have been people moving in, people moving out. 
And I do feel that this is uh, the month in which you're starting to feel very, very much at home. So I feel like there's a lot of celebratory energies concerning entertaining guests at home, having social functions, especially on the home front. This is a card where we are starting to make a house a home. It's like the whole you know, process of uh, feeling domesticated, feeling comfortable, feeling at ease, and doing some major redecoration within the home environment. I, I do feel like repairs, redecoration, um, weeding, gardening for many of you. And uh, the Wheel of Fortune is a very positive card that indicates a change, a turnaround in, in fortune. So for those of you who are looking to find a property, I do feel you're going to be able to land something that is right within your budget, within the square footage that you're hoping for. It's giving you a lot of space and it's giving you this sense of like prosperity overall. And then others of you who are hoping to sell a house as well, this is a very, very good card that indicates, you know, um, the right buyers will be made available to you and you will be able to relinquish control of properties if you're hoping to sell like a home situation okay like a, a house condo uh, things like that in terms of your recreation creativity we do have here the seven of wands showing up in the reverse position the seven of wands this is a card about defense, like defending our values, defending ourselves in the midst of opposition. When it shows up in the reverse position, I feel like coming through for this month, many of you, um, you're, you're tightening your inner circle. So that means that you're doing some type of um, analysis, cutting out and, and figuring out who your closest uh, friends are, the people that actually have your best interests at heart, the people that have been there for you and I do sense as well that, um, and I feel this strongly coming through, where there might have been, you know, like I, I feel some of you might have dated somebody in the past or married, have been married to, romantically linked in with somebody from the past, and your friends were just like, no, 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 don't date that person. And there might have been a lot of um, resentment, you know, like feeling unsupported by friends, feeling almost as if we constantly have to, you know, um, hide who we're dating, who we're seeing from friends because they don't approve. This is a card about uh, truth coming to light and this is a card about owning up to your truths, not feeling ashamed, not feeling as if you have to hide anything from your friends. So I feel like there's a, a great sense of like understanding between you and your close um, knit circle of friends where you're able to like um, have that have that heart to heart have that emotional honesty with other people so this is a very good card um overall in terms of creativity especially for those of you who are you know um who are trying to get things either published things implemented or things like to get off the ground this is a card that indicates that all your hard work is going to start to pay off. You're being noticed and there's some sense of like people recognizing the work that you're doing and especially for those of you who are artists, writers especially, I feel like this is a card where, you know, if you've uh, encountered opposition or blockages before to getting this one company or this one publisher to look at your product, I feel like you're going to be able to make great strides and, tr and traction and you're going to be able to present your case in a very spirited, in a very creative manner that makes you stand out, okay? So there's still some money um, as well coming through from the main employment gig as well as from situations where you might have like a creative side gig that you're doing. So overall, it looks good. It looks very balanced, both of these cards. In terms of your sixth house, the sixth house deals with routine. It also deals with um, work and health. First of all, let's talk about your work situation. Um, I feel like you're in a work situation where you know the ins and outs and you don't really need to um, ask your supervisors for their input, for their approval anymore. You're kind of like in the flow of things where you're doing things kind of just, um, you know, intuitively to the point where you have mastered something and you're just going through the motions. Some of you might be thinking about branching out, getting a, a different position, vying for like a more supervisory and managerial position where you're learning new things because it feels almost as if you know everything currently with your job. So you're not interested in, you know, staying put and stagnating yourself. So I feel like some of you are kind of like eyeing, you know, the, the uh, positions, 
positions that are above you that might be opening up for this month and they're telling you to go for it because I do feel that it's going to be very beneficial for you. I feel some of you are a little bit um, tired of the, you know, the routine, knowing everything already. So then work becomes a little bit bored. So you're, you're needing a lot more um, excitement. You're needing a lot of new energy in reinjected in your work environment in order for you to feel good and to feel happy and to feel like, you know, emotionally fulfilled and um, as if you're working with a purpose. Um, in terms of your health with the Fool card, in the reverse position, um, when it pertains to like specific parts of the body, with this Fool in the reverse, this is something that I'm feeling. And I feel this for a lot of times for Sagittarius. And this is the first time I'm getting this for um, Aries. You want to be careful about where you're going, okay? So like um, overestimating your strength. So that means, you know, wear and tear on your body. For those of you who are doing some type of aerobics or even lifting weights or even, you know, some type of a exercise regimen at the gym, be very, very careful about not pushing yourself past your limits. So I do see some some joints, some... Um, some joints, some some tendons, you know, just uh, sore spots associated with like weightlifting or things that you're doing and you're overexerting yourself, okay? So rein back your energy, physical stamina. I feel like you're coming into this month very optimistic and you're feeling almost as if, you know, I can conquer the world. And the, the, the physical symptoms that you're feeling if you overexert yourself, if you push yourself past your limit, is going to be, it's gonna force you to slow down. So they're just telling you to be a little bit careful for those of you who are doing any type of sports, who are doing any type of um, gym exercise routine, you wanna be a little bit careful. So that's just a mild warning. I don't feel like it's serious, but it's something that can really disrupt your daily routine as well. It can also, you know, uh, it might require you to call out sick for a few days if you're not careful. So I feel like all of these things are heavily affected and they, they go hand in hand. So just be careful, okay? Um, <clears throat> Relationship sector, we do have here the 10 of pentacles in the reverse position. I feel like some of you are finally leaving a cycle behind and moving on for good for this month. And I feel, first of all, um, I'm seeing that many of you are, are kind of like at a point in your life right now where you want to build this foundation. You know, the, you, you want the marriage, you want the, the, the commitment, you want the house. You might already have the house with the Wheel of Fortune coming through. So you want a partner to share your life with. You want children and eventually, you know, you might even have the pets already in the picture. So you're wanting to build these things up. And what's happening here is that you're very conscious that you want to build all of these things up, but the elements are not in place. So for example, you might have the house, you might have like, you know, a very, very good network of friends, and you have everything going for you emotionally, and you're looking for the partner to fill in the void, to, to fill in, you know, the, that idyllic picture of what a home means for you. And then for others of you, I feel like within your financial situation, there might be some housing repairs that needs to be done, and you're deciding these, um, making these financial decisions with a partner and you might not agree eye to eye as to you know what what each partner wants so that means you know do we settle here permanently or do we move after a few years and sell the house recoup our um our, our initial you know down payment and then shift to another house and where do we live do we live in the city do we live in the suburbs how many kids do we want so the timing might be a little bit off between you and your partner for those of you in a stable partnership regarding housing situations okay and i honestly feel as if many of you are coming into this month single this is the social dating card so i feel like you're still going through the process where you are, you know, socially dating, meeting people for different occasions, different social engagements, and you're trying to find the one that is willing to build this future with you. And so the, the energy here is very lighthearted. It's very like, um, it's very fun and exciting. But in terms of like feeling as if you've met the one, 
that you're willing to share this life with or build this life with. I don't feel that the timing is just right. So they're urging you more to, you know, err on the safe side. Date socially, expand your options, give people multiple dates before you make up their mind. But at the same time, I feel like you have this, um, it's almost as if crunch time, biological clock, wanting these things in a very systematic like manner, in a very specific time frame. And so you might be pushing somebody for more of a commitment and they're not just yet ready, okay? It's not that they don't care about you. It, it feels to me as if they're not ready for all of that just yet as of right now. And so they're urging you to slow down a little bit because time is still gonna be on your side. And um, I just keep seeing this crunch time associated with this card. It's almost like I'm losing time and you know, um, the biological clock is ticking or the physical clock is ticking, not just for women. You know, this is, um, you, you want to have everything built up at a certain time and you feel almost as if things and the environment and the people that you're dealing with are not cooperating. Others of you are basically dealing with some, um, either a separation or talks of a divorce and you're dealing with this through this month. It might have been something that was implemented, you know, like um, back in 2016 and it's at finally taking hold where you are actually liquidating your assets and trying to divide assets between people, trying to figure out where do the kids go, where do the dogs go, where do these furnitures go. And I feel like you're coming into the month already single and you're still dealing with this residual energy, which is going to start to clear up for you. Okay. So in terms of your eighth house, we have here the devil, and this is a freedom from bondage. This is a card that basically deals with in terms of your joint finances, financial assets and um, responsibilities and also, you know, financial assets or even financial obligations that you, uh, you share with another person. This is a, a, a card that is very good. It basically means splitting of the ways, like two people walking their separate ways. They're no longer bound to each other and they're no longer obligated to one another in, every, in any way. So I feel like a lot of you might have um, been dealing with the, the residual energy of you know legal issues, um, disbanding that marriage contract specifically, disbanding that um, that business partnership even, and then you're no longer sharing assets with another person, and you're basically freed from financial entanglements with another person. So this is a very liberating energy, and I feel like it's going to be ruled in your favor, and as a result, you're doing um, your little you know, celebration dance, and I feel like it's a very good uh, combination overall to denote that you're going to be severed you're going to be severing ties with somebody significant so that you can move on, okay? Uh, ninth house, we have here the Four of Cups. And the ninth house deals with education, higher education, specifically foreigners. It also indicates in-laws as well, and as well as uh, foreign travel. So the first thing that I want to mention here, and I usually look at these cards together. So this card deals with education, this card deals with career. And so in conjunction to one another, um, well, right next to each other, especially, and both in the suit of cups, it feels almost to me as if like a lot of you have gone to school and you're, you're you know, you might have gotten like a associate's degree, a, a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, a PhD even, in a very, very specific field that you, you, you like, that you find very emotionally rewarding, right? And whatever, for whatever reason, the current career track that you're headed, it feels like it's not using those degrees that you've accumulated. That's what it feels like to me. And so because you went to school for something that you feel you have an innate talent doing, and right now your career track is in such a way where you feel like you, you, you might have sought this career because of the financial stability. You might have sought it out because uh, at the time it might have been the only thing that was available for you and you wanted that financial security and so you took the job. And right now you're feeling a little bit bored and a little bit unfulfilled in your work environment. Okay? Um, they're saying that the work environment finances looks very, very stable. And so I do sense that this is kind of like, it's a blessing in disguise because at least it's made available for you. And so if you're thinking about either, you know, finding work that is related to whatever field of uh, 
whatever um, field that you study, I do sense that they're, they're saying with this card, the Four of Cups, it's almost like a situation where you might have to fill up your resume with experience related to the field of study in order to land that job. So for example, I hope that makes sense. Uh, the example, for example, if you went to school in the field of like human development, psychology, sociology, you wanted to help people, you wanted to, you know, fix families, you wanted to, um, um, you, you wanted to, to help people find clarity in their own life. And right now you're in a corporate environment. You might be doing sales, you might be doing contracts, for example. And so the, the lack of experience related to, you know, human development, related to psychology, is becoming apparent where you're not able to land job in the, in these fields. So they're telling you that you know you have to be a little bit more diligent about possibly interning or even finding part-time work or even volunteering or even doing some type of work on um pro bono basis is what I'm seeing um, on the weekends so that you can accumulate some experience in this field and then transitioning back into this field that really capture your heart and really capture your attention when you were in school that's going to be vital for some of you okay as it relates to schooling specifically for some of you uh, this is a card about you know changing majors multiple times and I feel it's almost as if you're, um, you're trying to collect knowledge. It's almost as if you're trying to breeze through it all. And then when it gets a little bit hard, you become discouraged and you don't follow through. So they're telling you to be a little bit careful about this tendency to um, limit yourself based on the fact that you feel almost as if I, I know it all and I don't feel like this is the right field for me. And so you, you, you switch majors continuously. And so they're telling you to be a little bit more diligent about schoolwork. They're telling you to be a little bit more patient um, when it comes to following through a full course or following, taking all the prerequisites or following through, you know, the whole course before you make up your mind whether or not something is good for you. So I do sense as well with this card in the educational sector, it basically means, um, you know, doing a job that you feel everybody is doing. So then you might have just um, gone, gone along with it. But in terms of whether or not it brought you emotional fulfillment, I feel like there's some, some disconnect here between what the heart wants and what the practical you know, field or, or course of major that you study. So there is a discrepancy here, and I do sense that that might be why. There's this sense of wanting to break out of your current work situation and finding something new, okay? Um, career track. Ten of Cups. First of all, um, there's a, a message coming through this card as it relates to your father. And it's actually quite interesting. Um, what I'm sensing here is, you know, your, your fourth house and your tenth house. The fourth house deals with the family and the mother. And we have here the Wheel of Fortune, which basically means some type of a turnaround within the relationship between you and your mother overall. And then there's a, a change in fortune when it comes to the mother figure. So I'm, I'm not sure if this is good or bad, but it just says a change in fortune regarding the mother figure. And I feel like your mother and your father, they might have been just very incompatible. You know, they, they might have been divorced. They might have been divorced from each other by now, or they're in the process of dealing with something in their internal relationship. And I feel like as the, as the child in, the rela in this interaction, it feels like it's affecting you on an emotional level. And I feel some of you, um, as it relates to your father, there are things here that I'm sensing a lot of you are just like, oh, dad is like this and dad does this. And I don't know, I don't understand why dad does, you know, this thing every single time. So there are some personality quirks. There are some things that you are disapproving of when it comes to your father. But I feel like as some of you get older, you're starting to realize that you, you are a lot like your father. That's what it feels like to me. And, uh, and then others of you, I feel like you're, you're being very, very harsh. You're passing judgment 
on your father, and it could be, you know, rightfully so. Maybe he's doing something he's not supposed to be doing. Maybe he's not, you know, doing things in his, um, uh, maybe he's not exercising his free will in the best manner. Maybe he's making bad decisions. Maybe he makes bad decisions when it comes to, you know, if he's single, if he's divorced. Maybe he's making bad decisions when it comes to um, dating the wrong people. But I do feel that, that, you know, your father is somebody that needs a lot of emotional support coming through for this month. And if that resonates with you, I feel like this card is screaming out, you know, the fact that uh, let's agree to disagree. I might not do the things that you're doing, but I'm not going to pass judgment. I'm going to be here to be emotionally supportive. So I feel almost as if this card is screaming out that, you know, the father in your life, he might need some help. He might need some emotional uh, support. He might also need some, uh, he, he might need you to reach out to him because he's going through some things. And as a father, he might be a little bit too proud to um, to burden you. He doesn't want to burden you. And I feel that reaching out to him in some capacity is going to be quite helpful. Um, with the Two of Cups as well, denotes that there are some, some issues within the relationship sector as it relates to your mother and your father, okay? So luck is turning around for the mother, and it can be good or bad, but I feel like generally it looks positive, but there's something here regarding the father figure. I feel like he needs emotional support from you. But however, in terms of your career overall, in terms of your career, what I'm sensing here is this. Um, they're telling you, they're telling you, for those of you who are a little bit lost, if, especially if you're not feeling um, that emotional satisfaction from your job, they're telling you, you know, like before the t age of 10, what was it that you really wanted to do? And they're telling you that it's not too late. Maybe shifting back, figuring out how your skills would be transferable into this, uh, back to this field that you, you've, uh, you were starry-eyed about when you were young. Maybe you wanted to be a teacher and you might have gotten a, um, a job in, you know, some type of financing, accounting industry. And you're trying to figure out how can I go back to teaching? Um, so look into areas where, you know, how you figuring out how your skills are going to be transferable, figuring out like what demographic groups that you want to teach. So these questions are coming up and I feel like one of the ways in which you can unblock your career sector relates to some type of a childhood value that you held, some type of a childhood goal, or some type of a childhood uh, dream that you've held where you feel like that's what I wanted to do. But you know, when we get older, and especially in our teenage years, and also as we go through college and after college, um, our, our dreams get sidetracked. And once we become sidetracked from our dreams, it's really difficult as an adult to realign ourselves, right? So I feel like one of the saving grace with this spread here is that if you have some blockages when it comes to your career and figuring out what do you need to do and figuring out why you keep bouncing around and feeling restless and not feeling that emotional fulfillment, they're telling you to really revert back to a, a time in your life where you felt like you had a different career track and for some reason you became sidetracked from it. So they're saying to go back to it and figure, in, and figure out why it was sidetracked and whether or not you can revisit it because I feel like it can be revisited and it's going to break you free and to allow you to pursue a career path that is more in alignment with uh, you right now as an adult, okay? So I hope that message is uh, conveyed articulately and I hope you understand that. It, it was just a very long-winded way of explaining it. I could have done a better job, but um, I'm just going to leave that there for you guys. So. One of the reasons why I choose this spread as well, because, you know, there's always a, an outlet. There's a input in energy and there's always an outlet and it deals with the opposite house. And it's going to be able to provide you some insights as to how you can steer your life and keep things back on track. OK, um, in terms of your 11th house, we have here the Empress. And the Empress, first of all, I feel like for those of you, uh, male or female that are watching this, who is an Aries, um, I feel like you are somebody that is um, very, very, uh, I want to say like 
they're they're saying stylish they're saying um somebody who who's who might be the the pack leader in your friendship circle in your group associations you are somebody who's usually you know very verbose <clears throat> you have a very good energy about you you take initiative and you're not somebody who sits back and wait for other people to catch up you are always on the go but they're saying you're someone who's very fashionable someone who's very um I, I want to say even quite attractive and also very, very stylish. And um, if there's a career track for some of you out there, I feel like that might be something you want to get into, you know, fashion industry, um, looking up the latest trends in clothing, in makeup, in hair, in, you know, whatever, um, even in, in it's just whatever, like in pop culture, whatever is popular. I, I feel like that's a good um, field for you to get into. For those of you who are, are changing, switching multiple majors, Maybe the, the field of communication, the field of uh, ra like broadcasting would be really good for you because you have this really strong aura about you where people look at you and you command attention. And a lot of it has to do with this sense of you know self-confidence overall. So I feel like in your friendship circle, in your group association, many of you are the, the types of people that uh, take care of your friends, like you know, you, you uh, if if you go out with your girlfriends or your guy friends and they just end up plastered and they end up drinking a lot I feel like you are the one that makes sure that you know there there's a sheet covering them that they're warm and that they're um, you take care of your friends in a very um, mother hen in a very like maternal way okay so even if you're a guy I feel like even if you 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 are a guy and you have guy friends you still take care of them in a very nurturing way and I feel like your friendships uh, the people in your group associations as well they really respect you they really look up to you and they really idolize the lifestyle and the way that you project yourself so this is a very very good card overall that indicates to me, you know, that um, this energy is going to be reciprocated where your friends are going to make you feel quite good. They're going to pamper you. They're going to reciprocate to the extent that you have given out in the past. OK, so this is a card about being taken care of, being living in luxury, living in abundance. OK, emotionally or even physically or even financially, I feel like there's a lot of blessings coming through friends and a lot of good connections that can be had, professional connections. Um, through the group associations. What I'm also sensing as well is that there might be um, as well pregnancies. Pregnancies, you're hearing about some, some pregnancy as it relates to your social circle, okay? A lot of people um, getting pregnant or even like pregnancy news, good news, or even uh, people deciding to get engaged, deciding to get married within your uh, social circle. And I feel like it's happening to multiple people. It's happening very, very fast. So that's what's coming through. Um, first of all, the 12th house here is a, it's traditionally the psychic house. The 12th house, 4th house, 8th house, okay? So those are the, the houses that I usually look for when there are channel messages trying to get through for you guys for this month. So usually, you know, this um, these four houses. Um, both of these cards worry me a little bit, but they're both in the reverse, which indicates to me something that you might already be aware of. The 12th house deals with secrets. And the secrets are usually related to other people or secrets that are coming out or things that in your environment that you might have inkling about, you might have intuition about, but you don't have clear cut answers. And what I'm feeling is this. Both of these cards are very similar in the way that they're depicted, right? In the way that they are uh, displaying. There, there's like three people and they're all showing up, both showing up in the reverse position. So I feel like a lot of you have either come across some information regarding your specific, you know, love partner. And I feel like this is somebody that you might be dealing with right now where you are undergoing some type of a divorce, mainly because of infidelity, temptation, infidelity, flirtation outside of the relationship, um, stepping outside of the relationship as well. And I feel like if it hasn't come to light, it might come to light for this month. If it's something that you have already figured out, then I feel almost as if 
you have already accepted the fact that you know the the partner is the way that they are they might have stepped out on the relationship there might have been some indiscretion that either you're keeping secret or they're keeping secret but i do feel like this is the month in which you need to start releasing this okay you have some good things trying to come through and i do feel like this is a month in which you need to realign yourself and and focus on the career Focus on your finances. Focus on you know the the people in your life, family members especially, that might quietly go through struggle with some inner emotional turmoil, and they're too proud to reach out to you. So mending these family rifts would actually, especially with a father figure, would actually be really important for you, rather than focusing and dwelling on these uh, the past relationship and having second thoughts or having doubts that you are doing the right thing by, you know, splitting assets, dividing and parting ways, okay? So I feel like many of you have been through a um, a very long-standing karmic relationship. It might have ended in the past, but you might not have been able to let it go. And this is the month in which it became apparent for you that you can no longer go back to that relationship. It might have felt like a soulmate connection. There might have been great chemistry but there was great incompatibility. I see somebody with a lot of jealousy, with a lot of rage. Uh, substance abuse came through as well. So I feel like this is the month in which you are able to piece together the full picture, make sense of it, and you're just like, okay, you need to move on, okay? So I'm gonna go into your love reading here, um, Aries, and see what's going on for you guys. So this is the card that represents the seventh house, which deals with, you know, relationships overall. So I'm going to use that as a transition into your love relationship reading. What's going on for Aries? For love, romance, relationships for the month of February 2017. Okay, so the first message that is coming out here is um, they're saying patterns don't have to repeat, okay? What that means is that I feel like some of you were in a situation where your own parents, your own mom and dad might have been uh, divorced, right? Might have been separated, might have been divorced, might have faced a lot of emotional or even... Um, difficulties like you might have grown up in an environment that was very very unstable because it, it was like a single parent household parents were not speaking to each other there was this, this underlying current of jealousy or even hostility between parents and i feel like some of you might have been in a blended family where you know your your dad might have had another family your mom might have had another family you felt kind of shuffled around you felt almost as if you didn't have that sense of family right and so you go into the world and in your relationships you were constantly constantly looking for that sense of you you were trying to create this family this idyllic family you know two two parents two pets two kids um possibly taking care of an elderly par parent uh, living in the same household you were trying to create this idyllic type of a situation because you didn't have it growing up and what it means is that in the process of searching, you know, this is a generational card. It's things that are karmically passed on from different generations. So, for example, if you grew up with a lot of, um, with like substance abuse, you know, it, it's a chain of abuse that can continue. And likewise, neglect, it's a chain of uh, events that can pass down from generations. If we were taught to behave a certain way that might not be good, we can pass these things down to our children if we don't catch them. So I feel like these are like generational um, things that are passed down from parents from different generations. And I feel like they might not have been healthy ways of doing. And so you might need to be the one to break the cycle. So for example, if you grew up in, you know, the, like the, that uh, broken household, for example, um, you might go through life feeling as if, if you yourself have been separated or divorced, you might feel as if, I failed. I failed at breaking, at creating the home that I'm looking for. 
or the home that I desperately crave. I failed at it. So don't beat yourself up over it, okay? Because I feel like we live and learn. And in the process of moving forward, as long as, you know, it, it doesn't require a traditional family to raise a child, right? It doesn't require these things. As long as both people agree that we're not right for each other, we need to part ways, then it's done in a spirit of compromise. It's done in the spirit of wisdom. So I feel like your definition of what family means, your definition of what you want out of a stable relationship is gonna change uh, drastically for this month. And I feel like you're simplifying your expectations or at least you're becoming a lot more realistic about your expectations. Um, others of you, might have been in a huge hurry, you know, to um, bypass like the steps in order to create the family. So you might have rushed into marriage. You might have rushed into relationship. You might have rushed into um, love partnerships, like uh, dating someone and then, you know, um, projecting these qualities onto them that makes them marriage material when in fact they weren't marriage material. So it's kind of like, um, clinging on very very strongly to this this thing this ideal family that you want and you're projecting qualities or putting the other person on a pedestal where they did not belong and so when they disappointed you you um it, it just like it, it created a lot of uh, difficulties for you to move on because you had such high hopes and expectations and and you you had like unrealistic expectations in that relationship the last thing that I'm feeling for some of you is that I feel like you're, you, were, you, you rushed a relationship in the past and now you've learned your lesson, okay? So it's kind of like lesson learned, either way. Um, this is a generational wealth once, a uh, once again, and it's going to take a lot of time to build and it's going like, to take a lot of uh, concerted effort from both parties, from all people involved in order to build it from the ground up. And I feel like with it in the reverse position, it's almost as if you jumped the gun, you rushed a relationship and you might have been with the wrong person, but you were rushing so you didn't realize they were the wrong person. Either that or you rushed the other person along and they weren't ready. It's, it has nothing to do with them, you know, not loving you or anything like that. I just feel like they wanted specific things in place first before they can commit. But you wanted to give them the ultimatum. You rush someone, something along, and the time wasn't right, okay? So I feel like you're starting to realize that. You're starting to um, open your eyes to the fact that things need a lot of time to develop. And, you know, that's a major, major uh, lesson for a lot of Aries because you guys, first sign of the Zodiac, you're very, very spirited and you're quite impatient. And so I feel like a lot of you have come to this realization that things can't be built overnight. You know, you can't rush another person because it's also contingent upon where they are in life, what their station is and, you know, what their what their plans are as well. So I feel coming through for this month in terms of relationship you're going to be uh, a little bit slower in, you, in your approach, or you should be slower in your approach, and you're going to try to nurture something from the ground up so that it can sustain that test of time, okay? So major, major lessons for you guys as it relates to the family, and I feel like um, they keep mentioning something about the behavior of the mother is being repeated with the child, so if your mother has been somebody who's quite impulsive, I feel like you're starting to realize, you know, I'm exactly like mom. Or if your father as well was um, quite impulsive, you might feel like I'm um, exactly like dad. So there's something here about generational expectations, uh, generational rifts as well. Um, give, I'm going to give you one more outcome card and see what both of these are linked up with. I have here the eight of wands all right so let's just talk about this um let's talk about the the crowning energy first the crowning energy is pretty much what you're thinking about moving into the month of february okay we have here the hermit and the ten of cups and the hermit is a card about looking at somebody it's kind of like digging information for um out of 
looking um it, it's almost like social media stalking it's almost like um asking mutual friends hey w what's my ex up to you know what's uh such and such up to who is he with right now who is she with right now are they still single are they married like you're you're looking into information you're looking for information about a specific person from your past i feel like the person once upon a time they were somebody that you had a very very long relationship with and this might be five years ten years it's something that is was very significant and it was very very long it shows up here as the Ten of Coins, and I feel like it might have been somebody you were married to. It might have been somebody that you might have told your friends, you know, this is like the love of my life. There might have been plans for wedding, so engagement. You, you might have been engaged to this person. And I feel like the relationship has, um, you're thinking about ways in which you can even repair it. You're thinking about You're thinking heavily about them, and you're thinking about, you know, what are they up to? Who are they with? And you might be feeling a little bit ashamed that you're thinking about these things, that you're not able to let them go. So there's still like a thorn on in your side and you're still wondering about this person. Even though you knew that compatibility wise, you both were not working in accordance with one another where you can build a sustainable family, where you can build a future together. Okay, financially, they might have been a very, very big drain on you. So I do see some codependent situation. I do see some boundary issues between you and this person. It's almost as if whatever you were making, they used it as if it was their, uh, as if you know the money belonged to them. There might have been a lot of shared resources and assets between both people. And as a result of it, I feel like you love them to the point where you were able to make a lot of sacrifices for them. But they weren't able to do the same thing for you. They were somebody who was a little bit more calculating. They, um, they held grudges is what I'm feeling. So I feel like this is something that you're grappling with. You know, It's like a love-hate type of thing, but you're still kind of curious. You're still wondering what they're up to. You're still trying to figure out you know, who they're with and, and things like that. I don't feel that you are physically going back to it because I do see some blockages here. With the Hermit as a major arcana card, it indicates something that is uh, no longer good for you and you are aware that it's no longer good for you. But there's this need for information, need for closure, need for like, um, um, I, I feel like just, just need for validation where you're, you might be digging into to see what they're up to, okay? So that's coming out first. <clears throat> In the past, we have here the Four of Swords as well as the Seven of Coins. And I feel like you were dealing with a person, might have been an earth sign, okay? So Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. What I'm feeling associated with this person is that they're saying there's a very, very long period of waiting for this person. You, were, you found yourself constantly waiting for them. So it's almost as if, you know, you, you told them, this is what I want. And they're like, I'm not ready for that. Can you give me more time? For whatever reason, I feel like those were messages coming through associated with your interaction with this person from the past. They might have been in school. They might have been trying to get their career on track. But either way, what it showed to you, what it revealed to you was that they didn't prioritize you. They prioritized whatever else was going on in their lives, okay? And you know, um, I mean, to be fair, a lot of the times we have to get certain, you, we have to get our ducks in a row before we can commit fully to another person. But I feel like you were ready to commit to somebody, but they made you wait. And I feel that the whole waiting process, it made you feel kind of like uh, put on the back burner. It made you feel as if they didn't appreciate you. And it made you feel almost as if I was foolish for waiting for so long. I was foolish for always uh, putting my needs on hold in order to accommodate the other person. So I feel like there was a lot of resentment um, coming through associated with this relationship because it feels almost as if two people were not working towards a common goal, okay? This is like building something of value. Two people who are seeing eye to eye. There's great attraction. I feel like there's great attraction. There's great chemistry with this person from your past, but I feel like they weren't you both were not 
your realities of the future that you want to build with one another is very, very different, is very muddled. And as a result of it, you don't see eye to eye and you can't really, um, you can't really, I want to say like you can't really build a future together. You're, they're, they're just not the right person for you and they couldn't give you what you wanted. And I feel a lot of you, you, you really put your heart out there, you know. This is uh, somebody making their, uh, wearing your heart on your sleeves. You, may, you, you left your feelings out there. You m let them know that you would always wait for them. And so this whole process of waiting, it, uh, it left you kind of empty, okay? In the present situation, I feel like a lot of you are drawing back your energy. I feel like for those of you who are in um, committed relationships, there's a lot of responsibilities that you are shouldering, but you're doing it in a very, very happy manner. And then others of you, you are trying to find your footing again because you have left this relationship behind. You're still thinking about them, but you know that they're not good for you. You know that they can't make a comeback in your life because it's going to lead to more disappointment. And so you're trying to, you know, get out there to start dating, to really find the one. And so they're saying like you're, you're letting go of that expectation from the past and you're trying to rebuild your empire. You're trying to rebuild your sense of self and you're trying to make yourself, cultivate yourself in a way where you are ready again to invite another person into your life, okay? And then for others, I feel like, you know, the responsibilities of parenting, motherhood and, and even fatherhood, it's, it's uh, taking its toll on you. And I do sense as well that um, you're doing it happily, but I feel like there's some imbalances between responsibilities shared between two people. So if you're in a relationship, there's some imbalances here that needs to be straightened out because I feel like it's, um, it's, it's repeating an old cycle where it could create resentment further down the line if it's not dealt with. So somebody, and I feel like somebody feels almost as if they're bearing the brunt of the relationship. Somebody's doing a lot of the housework. They're also doing a lot of the, the, the personal work. They're taking care of all their kids' responsibilities, and the other parent is too busy to chip in. So there needs to be a restoration w uh, with that balance. You know, there, there needs to be a balancing out of the responsibilities, who's doing what so that it's fair and so that it's manageable for both parties, okay? Um, once again, the message that I'm feeling here is especially... Um, a lot of you might have been in a situation where, and this is, you know, not going to apply to all, so please don't get offended because I feel like this is a little bit of a harsh message. I feel like you might have, um, you might have had a mother figure that was a little bit more self-absorbed. You know, like growing up, she might have put her needs first and she might not have, um, she might not have been, been there for you emotionally when you needed her. She might not have been like the, the type of mom that's very affectionate. She loves you, I feel that, but I feel like she's not the affectionate type. She's not somebody that emotionally or even physically expresses her love. And so you're examining her behavior and you're vowing to yourself, if I ever become a mother, if I ever become a father, I'm gonna behave differently. So I feel like uh, some of you are coming to that realization as well when it comes to your love relationships and how you can incorporate things like best practices based on your parental interaction, how your parents interacted with each other when you were grown up. And you know, you're gonna take away the good and leave the bad. So you're learning from your parents how to be a really, really good mother, how to be a very good father, how to be a really good partner and I feel like these things are coming through as powerful lessons because now you're starting to see like, you know, I, now I understand why I have the parents that I have because they're making me a better person despite their flaws, despite their, you know, self, um, despite their, the good and the bad, I feel like you're starting to realize that, you know, I have my mom for a reason because I'm learning certain things from her or I have my dad for a reason because I'm learning certain things from him uh, what not to do and what to do. So I feel like that's helping you um, navigate some issues that you're having in your current relationships right now, okay? So it's, it's very positive, it's very like um, inspiring. In terms of your foundation, and the foundation is something that you're bringing into the month of February with, okay? The knowledge or the, the physical item or the physical thing. So we have here the Knight of Wands as well as the Five of Coins. 
for those of you who are single, you're carrying a torch for somebody. So we have here the Knight of Wands. This is somebody who's very, very spirited. And this is somebody that is, um, you know, they're, they're kind of like, they're loving their life and they're living their life. And they're not going to be stuck in the past moping. I feel like you, you did go through a, a major, major cathartic experience where you left a significant soul relationship behind. And I feel like you're still thinking about that person, but you're moving on with your life and you're trying to branch out. You're trying to meet new people. There might be another fire sign as well coming into the picture for some of you. This is a Sagittarius, an Aries or a Leo. And this is somebody that is uh, carrying a torch for you likewise. And I feel like they're going to, it's, it's like shining light in, the, in, a, in a very dark cave, okay? Bringing you light, bringing you hope, bringing you some type of warmth in a place where you feel very uh, dejected, okay? So I feel like somebody's coming, uh, carrying a torch for you and they're gonna be approaching you and it's another fire sign. What's coming through in the outcome position here? We have the Hierophant leaving behind, um, I guess like expectations of what family should be, of what relationship should be like and um, moving forward so both of these things indicate leaving one thing behind all of the expectations associated with it and moving on with a new love relationship so i feel like some of you are dealing with separation divorce you have somebody new in the picture possibly another fire sign and you're moving on you're not looking back okay so i feel like there's a a, a certain level of finality here even though you're thinking about it you're not going back to the past You've learned some major lessons as it comes to, you know, uh, pertains to like parenting, as it comes from your own parents and their experience, and you're vowing not to repeat that. And I do feel you, some of you have a new crush, a new person that is in your life pursuing you. And so you're moving ahead, and there's going to be a lot of communication back and forth between you specifically and that fire sign. You're dealing with another fire sign, okay? Um, very good love spread overall. The energy is very nice. It's, um, it, I feel like it's just, um, it's allowing you to close some doors. It's giving you some closure. And I do sense that, you know, this is a, a really good time for all of you to as well move on, okay? Um, for those of you who are dealing with some, who are in relationships and who are, you know, trying to figure out what's fair and what's not, I do feel that by the end of the month, you're going to be able to have a, a breakthrough in communication. You're going to be able to realize that, you know, my uh, partner and I have been dealing with some uh, difficulties, but we are wiser and we are able to communicate thoroughly and effectively. And as a result, you're able to figure out some resolution for it, okay? So I feel like you have some very good energy coming through here, Aries. So. That concludes your reading. If you'd like to book a private reading with me, please uh, visit my website in the description box below. And uh, if you'd like to donate to my channel, it's always a greatly appreciated. And the information for the donation link as well is in the description box. And I will be back for the mid-month reading. I wish you all the best. Happy Valentine's Day and enjoy yourself, okay? Take care. Bye-bye.